بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد شاكرين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The purpose of today's discussion is not to entertain our followers on Facebook or people on Facebook or whoever tunes in today. The purpose today is to have a serious discussion of a long going uh, long ongoing issue which is uh, the flawed methodology of uh, an individual who has attempted to critique the traditional sunni method but recently he was asked regarding the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam whether the blessed body of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is still preserved in the grave or whether it has rotted and uh, <clears throat> dissolved. So he gave the answer to the effect that the body of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has dissolved and rotted away. Billah. And of course, aside from this being offensive, this is also based upon a flawed methodology. And the purpose of today's life is to critique that flawed methodology. Now, two posts were placed on my Facebook page. One was written by my younger brother, uh, Yasir Rashid, and an additional post was uh, uh, written and placed by myself. I wanted to analyze that the content of that post step by step, but also at the same time entertain those people who not only troll the page, so remember this page is run by an admin team. There are two to three people who run the page. I do not look at the page regularly, except when I am with the, some of those members of the admin, or if they bring something to my notice. There are many people who troll the page, but when I give them the opportunity to question me live, sometimes they fail to critique my method on a live feed or a, or a live questions and answers they fail to turn up and um, answer my objections or give me counter objections so the purpose of today's live feed is to observe some of those criti uh, criticisms those objections to what i am stating and also with regard to uh, the flawed methodology how do uh, and why do we propose that that methodology is flawed, illogical, irrational, has no basis uh, in any uh, science or is not grounded in anything uh, technical? Uh, some uh, people <clears throat> will attempt to say that uh, the method that I employ is also uh, flawed. So if they believe this, then they should uh, pose their questions, challenge me on the live feed pr place your questions but what i wanted to initially cover is the article that i wrote regarding abu Layf. now uh, that article is online so i will uh, request one of the brothers in the room to pass over the article i will go over that article paragraph by paragraph as i go through the article paragraph by paragraph you can keep posting your questions especially the followers of abu Layf. Or Abu Layf himself, he can come online and he can critique my method. Uh, remember one difference between uh, my live feeds and uh, his live feeds or of many other people is that we do not block anyone or delete anyone unless you swear, you use uh, insulting swear words or you insult uh, prophets Ali Mustadam or the or holy people like the companions Ali Muridwan. So uh, I would also uh, request some of the brothers in the room to, if there are any uh, questions on the live feed, please pass over the questions from your phone so you can uh, watch the page from your phone. And if there are any questions, you can uh, pass over the questions to me whenever there is a question uh, online. Now, the firstly, the clip this individual has a Monday nights live every Monday. Now, 
I have not been paying attention to any of his Monday nights live for a long time since we had our uh, initially what was a discussion but then what broke into a shouting match because he continuously spoke over me would not answer any one of the questions or uh, diverted the entire subject so uh, since that time and until recently I have not paid any attention to any of his uh, clips but what happened recently was that my brother younger brother Yasser Rashid brought to my attention that this individual has said some very insulting remarks regarding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of saying uh, the body of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has disintegrated which by the way goes against consensus meaning agreed upon position of all the sects of uh, the, uh, the re- meaning the Shia they do not hold the position that the body of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, rotted the Salafi movement do not hold the position the vast majority of the Salafis today do not hold the position that the blessed body of the Prophet has rotted they do not hold this position additional to that the uh, other sects do not hold the position that the body of the Prophet has disintegrated and rotted there have been a few anomalous people who have stated such things in the past and have been refuted even by people of their own sect so uh, he also said something regarding the the blood of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now that clip was posted online and of course this was passing a red line meaning there is a red line uh, the individual passed the red line and the main thing that needed to be critiqued is his flawed methodology why because people who are not trained in the Islamic uh, Kalam methodology or people who have no root, rooting in, in the traditional religious method, they could easily fall prey to his claims. So the purpose of the post was to go through uh, his methodology and at the same time expose that why this methodology leads to erroneous conclusions one of which is the erroneous conclusion regarding the blessed body of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but there are many other erroneous conclusions he has made in the past like the uh, ascension and descent of isa alayhi salam which is negation of mass transmitted hadith uh, reinterpreting the uh, dajjal al masih al dajjal is the false messiah the false messiah that shall appear in the end of times reinterpreting uh, a mass inter- a mass transmitted hadith as being a system likewise rejecting many mass transmitted hadith uh, and legal rulings all of which is documented in these many videos which most people do not have time to go through those videos but whatever has been brought to my attention i attempted to dismantle the two uh, main issues in the past that i did <coughs> critique one was the issue relating to the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala uh, which he referred to as the Bukhari Gateway and my response video is online the second issue was the uh, ascension and descent of Isa alayhi salam my response video is online both of these have not been adequately answered by the individual mainly because his methodology is flawed so once his followers understand that his methodology is flawed they will understand that why he makes these erroneous conclusions now the claim is uh, of the uh, the claim is often made that the traditional sunnis are the ones who are blind following and blind conformity and the followers of abu Layth are the ones that uh, have opened their minds are questioning their religion questioning their faith looking for answers now if that is the case then we need to critique the exact methodology of this individual some of his uh, followers have stated that uh, that asrar rashid may be annoyed that his uh, video on ya'juj and ma'juj was critiqued i was i was unaware that my video was critiqued until now and uh, for him to critique the video on ya'juj and ma'juj is a non-issue for me because if he had watched that video carefully and he doesn't listen to everything that is being stated 
I said I do not adopt the position of those people who are exploring for the barrier of Ya'aduj and Ma'aduj in that video. At the very beginning I said this. So for him to critique a 40 minute video without even listening precisely to what is being said, this that is of no relevance to me. He has critiqued and said worse things in the past but uh, has not received any attention. But this statement regarding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam is his most erroneous uh, mistake and flaw uh, due to his flawed methodology that he has uttered to date. So uh, the first paragraph um, in which I mentioned that if there is a verse of the Quran or a hadith that has a clear import, this individual, I state, uh, he, he would state that it is allegorical, symbolic or totally meaningless. So when, if there is a verse of the Qur'an or a hadith which is very explicit in its import, meaning what it signifies, this individual goes on to say, this, uh, like for instance the uh, verse in the Qur'an which states, Isa Ali Saddam spoke in the cradle. He went and reinterpreted that verse. It renders the meanings of the Qur'an as being meaningless, meaning... Uh, so many of the verses of the Quran that he goes ahead and interprets uh, like the devils as being uh, the the innate nature of a human or the angels being something else reinterpreting by the way these ideas are not new, unique or new to him they have been uh, stated in the past in the past uh, many people who belong to the Mu'tazili sect for instance they said these things but they were refuted by Sunni uh, scholarship and they finished uh, as time went by. People did not adopt these views because these uh, views were dismantled by the likes of Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. So one of those problems is that any verse of the Quran, he would say this verse is allegorical or symbolic or it, it is totally meaningless. In the case of Hadith, he will also sometimes, if the meaning of the hadith is explicit, this person will reinterpret the hadith also. But additional to that, what he will do is claim a hadith is um, totally weak or forged. And these are claims made without any substantiation. Now, it is fine for an individual to make a claim, but when challenged on to, uh, to substantiate that claim and being unable to do so, and then making a mockery to cover up their vacuous, empty scholarship is shameful. Meaning, uh, a claim, a person can make any claim. If that person is challenged then to substantiate that claim, to cover that up with a mockery or a clowning or making a, a, a joke of, of the actual issue, is to cover up uh, the empty box that the person is. So... The two reasons which I present, the first one, what I wrote was, the first problem relates to a lack of being precise in what methodology is being employed in interpreting any religious texts. That means any individual can open up the Qur'an, read the Qur'an, and take any meaning that they understand. At the moment, Abu Layth is not delineating, demarcating, any clear methodology that he is employing, meaning, for instance, if you have a discussion with a person who belongs to the Hanafi school or the Maliki school, they will, when interpreting religious texts, they will use the religious terminology of those schools, state that this verse is general in its meaning or a verse is specific in the meaning or, or a verse is abrogated or a verse uh, has these reasons for its revelation, background of revelation, all these technicalities. What Abu Layth does is if he feels that this ver the verse of uh, the meaning of a verse is what he believes it to be, he will state that, but he will not resort to any one of the uh, schools in order to justify that claim. If he has no school, which is fine, meaning he's a free thinker according to his claim, then his task is to present precisely what is his method, meaning if he is not following 
the rules and guidelines set out by the likes of Imam uh, Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i rahimahullah in a risala he doesn't follow the guidelines of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala or any of those scholars then he must explain what is his own methodology with regard to verses which to this day he has not done and will be unable to do because why is he unable to do so because the number of scholars that have devoted their lives in interpreting the Quran and Hadith they have covered every angle of interpretation that anyone who, who arrives today to say that they follow a different methodology their methodology will automatically fall on one of the previous methodologies. So even Abu Layth, if he does, uh, meaning he brings about a new method, that new method will, you will, if you read all the Islamic books, you will find that old method in ancient books, maybe in the schools of the uh, Mu'tazila, like the likes of Al-Nadham and others, they already had that methodology, it was critiqued and it went into the history books, meaning people buried that method because it was flawed. So any new method that he brings out, it will be found in the previous books and the scholars have already critiqued that method. So what I mentioned regarding this, zero clarity and regulations, methodology, legal theory, principles of jurisprudence, hermeneutics, epistemology, logic and rational thought. Meaning even in what he deems as being rational, what is that rationality? What principles is that rationality based on? Meaning any stupid individual can... Uh, as I said, a vacuous, empty individual can come along and say he believes that this, uh, the meaning of this verse is what he he entails it to believe. But to substantiate that is a different thing. Meaning substantiating that with principles. Likewise, um, the this lack of being principled leads to denying whatever one disagrees with without any real basis. Meaning, if someone disagrees. Let's say with a raj, a raj meaning the, the stoning of an adulterer, like uh, some shiuch did, like uh, Abu Zahra or uh, recently Yusuf al Qardawi. Now, the difference between them and uh, Abu Layth is that they will substantiate their claim. And then the Sunni ulama tend to refute their claim based upon principles. Uh, someone may say, that this is pedantic, uh, pedantry, the, the actual response is that it is not pedantry, it is the normal rule of life. That if you read a text, you have uh, textual criticism, uh, when you have textual criticism of any text, anyone who carries out textual criticism, they have a method on how they carry out that criticism. You cannot just have a haphazard, random method of interpreting any text. For instance, uh, tomorrow, I have a debate with Christians, I have the Bible here in front of me. Now, it would be very unprincipled of me to critique the Bible in a haphazard uh, cowboy fashion. It would have to follow a set of principles. Likewise, uh, this was uh, the first point. The second problem is uh, zero application of Arabic grammar, rhetoric and any other linguistic uh, Arab linguist uh, Arabic devices. Now. Uh, that are absolutely essential to understanding the Quran and Hadith. So the first was uh, a lack of principles in interpreting those texts. And secondly, a lack of resort to linguistical devices. And this is very important because if you don't have grammar and you don't use Arabic grammar, you don't use rhetoric, like the Hadith in question, Inna Allah harrama ala al-ardi an ta'kula ajsad al-anbiya. Meaning famous Hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. A very clear hadith. Of course, there are various, uh, uh, numerous variants of the hadith. The hadith is mutawatir. Mutawatir means so many people narrated the hadith that it is impossible for them to have convened and made a forgery. So conveniently, he reinterprets the hadith. Now, someone may say, that we are straightjacketing the freedom of speech of people, curtailing their rights to uh, entertaining an idea. The answer is, that is not the issue. The issue at hand is, he made a uh, an interpretation. 
But that interpretation, he said, is preservation of the works of those prophets and not their, necessarily their bodies. On what linguistic basis, on what grounds of Arabic rhetoric have you stated as such? Meaning, if every individual interpreted language in accordance with what they feel the language means, then you will have uh, numerous interpretations for one statement which will have no qualifications. So this is why towards the end of the article some of his followers felt that I insulted his mother uh, and they said this is ad hominem. In reality it was not an ad hominem. I'm saying that if you do not follow any rules of language, any rules of rhetoric, any rules of Arabic, every statement can be reinterpreted by every individual how they deem fit. A man gives divorce to his wife but then when he has gone to court or brought in front of a qadi or a mufti and he states that I did not intend divorce even though his words are explicit. A man insults another man but then uh, denies the, uh, that the word in itself is insult. Words will carry no meaning because every individual will interpret those words how they deem fit. If that is the case with every common speech, that every common speech fits the rules of language, then what would be the case with the Qur'an and the Hadith of the Prophet The Qur'an and the Sunnah have a framework of grammar, a framework of morphology, a framework of rhetoric, a, f a, linguist a linguistical framework in which nuances are understood, implications, signification of a word, all of this is understood. The science of rhetoric and um, uh, which is studied within all the schools of thought. So this, these are the two foundational problems with the methodology of Abu Layth. Number one, uh, no clear methodology in interpreting legal theory uh, method of interpreting verses of the Quran or the Hadith, how you declare a Hadith uh, uh, as being forged because you feel it is Mawdu. I mean, someone picks up a work of hadith, they feel the meaning isn't right, they declare it mawdu. But when uh, a request is made to substantiate that claim, you are unable to substantiate that claim, so you cover the claim up with comedy. You make a comedy of the entire situation, a parody of the entire situation. A person can have comedy and parody and all these things, that's fine. But... If a claim is made and you are told to substantiate any of those claims and are unable to do so, it's very sad when a person would have to cover up their lack of uh, principal methodology with with uh, comedy and not a, a real academic response. So, uh, what I wrote with, with regard to this. This unprincipled methodology or no methodology at all means anyone can reinterpret any text of the Qur'an or Hadith without recourse to principles that are rooted in the Arabic language and legal theory as was set out by the like of Imam al-Shafi'i in his Ar-Risal. Applying the epithet Maliki or Shafi'i and yet being a total dunce regarding the agreed upon principles of those schools is very sad to say in the least. Meaning, <coughs> if you ascribe yourself to a school, Maliki school, at least furnish your claim with the principles of the Maliki school. Additionally, uh, uh, example, an example I gave of this was our discussion regarding the ascent and descent of Isa a.s. In my counter response, I requ requested uh, Abu Layth that he made a claim that 28 uh, companion, I mean, the hadith of the descent and ascension of Isa is narrated by 28 companions in over 80 hadith. So many scholars they wrote on the compilation of the descent of Isa is Anwar Shah Kashmiri's work is a famous work. There were others, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Al Ghumari, uh, uh, Mustafa Rida Khan, uh, many other scholars they wrote uh, compilations on the hadith. The best work, in my opinion, is the work of a Sheikh Abdullah Al Ghumari on this particular issue. Uh, even a Sheikh Zahid Al Kothri wrote a work on this issue. Now, to critique that is your freedom to critique. 
لا إكراه في الدين. There is no compulsion in religion. But when you make a claim, you must substantiate that claim. So you made a claim that the hadith of ascension and descent of Isa is a forgery, a Christian forgery. The response was simple, that 28 companions narrated the hadith in over 80 narrations, some have compiled over 100 narrations. A simple request was made, demonstrate how each one of those chains of narrations was forged by a Christian. In fact, even demonstrate how each chain is a forgery. A demonstration of your claim, substantiate your claim with your principles, your own principles, meaning who is saying to Abu Layth that limit yourself to our principles? Uh, the principles of the Hanafi school in, in Faro subsidiary rulings or in the Ashari school in terms of creed. Who is saying to you limit yourself to their principles? Meaning, when in dialogue with a Salafi or in dialogue with a person from any other sect, we are familiar with their principles. So we can discuss from the foundational principles that they have in their works or even without their works what they may state. This person is unable to give a clear methodology. That meaning even the likes of uh, Atabek Shukrov, who, with whom I had a dialogue. He has a book on his methodology in the Hanafi school, what he claims is a correct methodology. Even someone like him, who has some similar views to Abu Layth, he has a book on his methodology. His methodology is defined. So he was unable to furnish any proof with, uh, with regard to showing, substantiating uh, demonstrating how the 28 companions who narrated the hadith of the descent of Isa alayhi salam, their hadith are forgeries. Yet, uh, we are the ones that his followers are claiming that we are the blind followers. We are the people in blind conformity. When, in reality, people who follow the Ashari and Maturidi and Athari method, in the three Sunni schools, they have a very clear methodology. A person can dialogue with us with, in accordance with our methodology. And we can substantiate and demonstrate any creedal point. Meaning, it's not purely a dogmatic creed. Anyone who is trained in Islamic theology would be able to state the creed and show the correctness of that position textually from a text and also rationally. If there are any questions, uh, please do pass them over. Pardon? Go through the critique and then. Uh, any are there any r relating to the current? Few... Yeah, can you just uh, pass them? So then. Place it on here. I will. I will go back to <coughs> what I had written. I, I want to entertain some of the questions, especially of those people who are followers of Abu Layth. I am open to questioning. Open uh, that you can object to me. I'm open to dialoguing with you. There is no blocking on my page. There is no banning. As long as you do not use foul language. And as long as there is, there are no insults on uh, holy personalities. Meaning as long as there are no insults and swearing and abuse, you are open to question anything. Unlike his page where he will ban anyone who even calls him by his name. So... Uh, uh, this page inshallah is open to everyone to come and critique even what I am stating so I may respond accordingly is it done so Uh, Ihya uh, Uddin asks, Sheikh Asrar, what can we do to stop Abu Layth? His devilish words are misguiding many people. Also, please speak on him being exposed. Okay, firstly, I am not going to speak about the individual's personal life. I do not believe it is my task to talk regarding his personal life. Um, what can you do? Again, in this country, we live in a democracy. In this country, people are free to say what they want to say. The only response we can have is academic, intellectual. And that's with anyone in this country. 
I would say internationally, because we live in a globalized world, a secular world today, that the response traditional Sunni Islam has always countered intellectually. Uh, from the time of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, he had his mehna trial. When he had his trial, mehna, he was lashed. But Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal kept his response intellectual. Today you have no Mu'tazila. But the creed of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal remains. The Mu'tazila finished. Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, he wrote works, countered his opponents intellectually. Today you have the works of Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali in every language. But the works of his opponents, you will really find them being read and studied. So the response, Ihya al-Din, is... Uh, intellectual now Umar uh, uh, Fiyaz Ahmed uh, you make an interesting point one of the uh, intellectual um, patrons of Abu Layth is a man called Khidr Hayat Bakrawi in Pakistan Khidr Hayat Bakrawi, a Diobandi scholar. He is a student of Yunus Numan. Many of the ideas that Abu Layth brings forward in the UK are from Khidr Hayat Bakrawi. So his ideas are not original, but his followers are unaware of this. Likewise, even his claims regarding the Sahih of Imam Bukhari were taken from an Urdu work, um, uh, a book which I mentioned in my counter regarding his. Uh, critique of the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari Rahmallah Ta'ala So Ayman Mansur You've, you state, Assalamu alaikum, dear Shaykh. I've noticed that you use the proof of Ijma' often. Do you refer to Ijma' in the most prevalent usuli meaning Ittihadu ahli al-halli, Ittifaqu ahli al-halli wal-aqt, or the linguistic meaning uh, that many of the ulama has the concerned position? If you mean the usuli meaning, then the one who contradicts this has left the fall of Islam. Should we not be careful to use the Ijma' argument? Uh, Brother Ayman, Ijma uh, is two types. One is Ijma which has istinad to dalil qati dalala and qati thabut, a, 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 which relies upon something which is firmly established and um, uh, incontrovertible in what it signifies, qati thabut. Denying that type of Ijma is disbelief. A second type of Ijma is that ijma' which has istinad ila dalil dhanni which is a, a, a dalil which is not qati al not uh, decisive in its implication that denial of that type of ijma' is the ijma' which is considered as heresy not disbelief okay uh, Basil Atar you ask a very good question Sheikh Asrar what's wrong with using reason alongside Sunnah and Quran as a methodology. Basil Atar, no one is fl is claiming that using reason is wrong. The Ashari school uh, was one of the former schools in using reason alongside with Quran and Sunnah. The problem we are having is that Abu Layth, his methodology is not based in reason. Meaning the two points that I made, number one, is that Abu Layth has no principles, no methodology in how to interpret the Quran and Hadith. The second is that he does not use linguistical methods, uh, no re recourse to rhetoric, no rec recourse to grammar, no recourse to morphology in making any deductions regarding the, the uh, scriptures. So this is the problem. Uh, as for reasoning, I will go on to his faulty reasoning uh, when I uh, peruse through the article at the bottom. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Alim, do you only discuss based on the Rashidia book? The answer is no. That particular discussion with Uthman was based uh, upon his 
principles of debating. If someone has different principles, I would just want them to set out those principles. If they are unable to set out any principles, then there is no point in debating. So, if Abu Layf doesn't follow the methodology of Rashidiya, for instance, then he would have to uh, make clear uh, his uh, methodology in debating, his methodology with linguistics, his methodology in usul. I mean, if he has his own methodology, that is fine, but he would have to make clear what methodology he actually follows. Likewise, Ihya uh, al-Din Shaykh shows us why we need Ijma' and can you uh, show us where Ijma' is used by the Salaf? Uh, I don't want to uh, digress onto the issue of Ijma' just yet. Uh, I wanted to go on to, uh, uh, to uh, the flawed rational methodology, meaning uh, uh, the Sunni ulama are not against a rational methodology. The Sunni ulama are at the fore, forefront of using rationale. The problem is when you have an individual who has no principles discussing things without any recourse to any principles or linguistical guidelines. Can you not just debate him like you did Ustaz Abdul Rahman Hassan, i.e. have someone chair it? Well, if there is anyone serious in the middle to chair such a debate, that would be good because they would need to silence him when he interrupts me, meaning uh, or refuses to ask a question. Meaning if there is someone who can chair that, that would be fine. Uh, Ansar Hussein, shouldn't ulama from across the board be asked to respond regarding his beliefs? Why the silence? I'm sure there are many from Salafi, the Ubandi background watching. What do you think about an academic condemnation across the board? Well, there should be an academic condemnation across the board and people from those various sects need to be asked why they do, uh, cannot or are not responding to him. Uh, for the excuse made that uh, we are only giving him attention or increasing his uh, fame. You see, the problem is not an individual. The problem is that you have uh, a no method being promulgated, a no method of interpreting the Quran. That is what it needs to be tackled. That uh, we need uh, people to be very clear on what method they follow. So, So Muhammad Abbas, did the Prophet Ali Salam physically, physically come in the body and spirit on the night of Isra wal Mi'raj and pray behind the Prophet Ali uh, Salatu was Salam in Al Masjid Al Aqsa? Firstly, uh, Abu Layth in his methodology, I uh, will go back to the article once we finish crit critiquing him from uh, what is. A rational and a uh, methodological approach to his uh, his uh, his uh, criticisms, then we will be able to answer many questions. So after I um, made it very clear that Abu Layth has no clear principles in how to interpret a text of the Quran or the Sunnah. Likewise, if he declares a hadith a forgery, he will claim without any substantiation, and likewise. He will state that uh, something uh, is allegorical or symbolical or has no real meaning uh, without any recourse to rhetoric or Arabic language. This is the first thing. Secondly, one of the uh, brothers there uh, asked the question regarding what is wrong with rationality, using rationality alongside with Quran and Sunnah. The response is that Islam encourages people to use their minds, encourages them to follow creed without blind conformity. The problem I am having with the no methodology of Abu Layth is that the person cannot even distinguish between rational judgments and empirical judgments. Uh, this is something very clear. What do I mean by uh, rational judgments and empirical judgments? If someone can just know these basic things, they will be able to, I mean, this is like giving you a screwdriver by which uh, every individual is able to then unravel 
and unscrew and take apart his entire arguments. Uh, judgments are three types. You have a legal judgment. The Quran and Sunnah state something is halal or haram. That's a judgment. Meaning the very meaning of judgment is affirming or negating something. The second type of judgment is from our observation of phenomena around us. So we observe water flows downwards. We observe that if you place water on a plant, the plant will grow over time. We observe that if you cut uh, the skin of someone, blood will come out. These are, uh, these are empirical judgments. What Abu Layth is doing is confusing uh, empirical judgments with uh, empirical judgments with uh, rational judgments. This is very important for people to understand. This is what I mentioned in the article. Um, two common themes you will notice in his outrageous statements, which n n have now many have bec uh, become desensitized to and thus lost interest, are a denial of the unseen, supernatural and miraculous. Meaning, anything which is metaphysical beyond this realm, he denies. Meaning, a materialistic outlook. Why does he deny it? Because he confuses the observable nature around us with the rationale. So, people, uh, if I say to someone that a tree can grow without roots, they will say that's irrational. But is that actually irrational? The answer is no. That goes against what we observe. There's a distinction. The second uh, point I mention is outrageous verdicts that are deemed anomalies by normative Islam. The, the second issue I didn't cover as much, meaning there may be many people who listen to Abu Layth because he gives nice verdicts for them that they are permitted to do so many things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has prohibited. They don't like Sharia, they don't like the restrictions of Sharia, so they follow him. I didn't cover that. What I covered is the, the theological and uh, theological flow and those things which relate to creed so with regard to the first which is a denial of the unseen or that which is miraculous this is based on the inability i say inability because i genuinely believe he's unable to make a distinction between a rational judgment and an empirical judgment hukum akli and hukum adi now i'll go into this i'll just uh Asad Hussein asks, which Islam are you following? Islam is one, brother. Islam is one. Uh, I belong to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So, if uh, anyone, their question hasn't been answered, please continue posting on here i will answer your questions i do not want to leave any question today so if a person cannot make a distinction between a rational judgment and an empirical judgment they will fall into the main mistake that abu Layth is making what does that mean some of his uh, followers will ask him the question how can an angel come in the form of a man they will say this is impossible but what they mean to say is that they have never observed such phenomena. There's a distinction. Impossibilities are something else. Impossi rational impossibilities are those things that the mind will tell us without any recourse to observable nature, to something in the outside world, from the mind, purely from the mind, that we know it is impossible. Like if someone says to you, two and two makes five. From the mind, you know this is impossible. Likewise, if someone says to you, Something is moving and still at the same time. Or something is large and small at the same time. This is a rational impossibility. But miracles do not fall into this. What miracles fall into is that the observable uh, nature around us, if God uh, halts any, any laws of physics or vi the laws of physics are violated or the laws of physics uh, uh, superseded this is what is termed as being a miracle and it is not rationally impossible so uh, in, in theology rational theology they term this as being al-hukmul adi meaning the first one empirical judgment and the second one is al-hukmul aqli rational judgment 
when we talk about rational impossibilities, it refers to the second, that the mind will judge it to be impossible, not uh, the uh, empirical observed uh, phenomenon. So the example I give, if I said to an individual 1400 years ago that the metal can fly, he would reject it as impossible. Or if I said I can travel to, from Mecca to Jeru Jerusalem in a short period of time, they would have also dismissed that as being impossible. But this type of impossibility is classified as being an empirical impossible, impossibility and not a rational impossibility. The very meaning of rash empirical impossibility is that we do not observe such a phenomenon. So 1400 years ago, if I said to Abu Lahab that metal can fly, he will say this is impossible. He may have meant rationally impossible, but what he should say is that it is what empirically impossible, meaning we do not observe such things. So when miracles occur, it means it breaks the norms, the violations of the norm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his divine power violates the norms that we observe. This is something so vital that if the followers of Abu Layth understood this, they would not follow any of uh, those statements that he makes or they would at least open their minds and be critical of him. This is why I've opened up... Uh, so, uh, here Ilyas uh, Galufi states, what makes a rational judgment a rational judgment as a rational judgment is also dependent from an observation uh, incorrect sometimes uh, or many times we make rational judgments without ever having observed the phenomena we would know certain things without observing phenomena uh, empirical judgment depends on the continuous observation of something meaning water flows downwards we continuously observe this for the most part a uh, water flows downwards but sometimes if someone says water can flow upwards rationally speaking that can happen but someone will say we do not observe it but rationally it can unlike saying two and two is five rationally and empirically that's impossible uh, Ahmed Qasim you say uh, I believe a neutral venue and a mediator would be beneficial to allow a debate to happen and give you uh, both the space to make your arguments I believe so also that uh, of course a neutral venue and uh, a mediator would uh, this would be uh, something Ahmed Qasim, I have been a vocal critic of some of your approaches in the past, but I appreciate the depth you are providing. Well, I would say, as everyone else, I'm a weak human being with flaws. So keep me in your prayers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps uh, these endeavors sincere for his sake, not for fame or uh, for any other ulterior motive. I would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the likes of Abu Layth, that he is able, uh, if... If, if he is not guided, at least have the decency of substantiating your claims. So then uh, Abu Lahab would be unable to understand that planes flying is something possible. He would deem that as being a rational possibility. Now let's give a modern example. The likes of Richard Dawkins. He believed that the Burak, in his interview with Mahdi Hassan, he made a mockery of the Burak. What is the rational judgment of a being like the Burak? The answer is, it is possible. It falls in the realm of possibility. Even though empirically we do not see a creature like the Burak. Or for instance, if I say to you, a, ma a mountain of jewels. A mountain of jewels can exist. We've never observed a mountain of jewels. But the mind tells you this is a possibility. There is no contradiction between the two. 
there's no irrationality of uh, of in the external realm a mountain of jewels existing so even though we have not observed so richard dawkins when he denies the buraq because he has not observed the buraq this is absurdity rationally speaking aliens can exist rationally speaking an alien can exist meaning in, in another planet creatures and beings but those things which fall into irrational are those things which uh, we would say uh, lead to tanaqud a contradiction of uh, like i mentioned being a paradoxical state of moving and stillness at the same time or something being large and small at the same time or two and two being five these are uh, irrational judgments so uh, confusing the observable phenomena with rational judgments is the main reason why Abu Layth denies miracles. So, uh, what I mention here also is, so with our modern Abu, there is a lack of comprehension on these simple distinctions and subsequently a total denial of the divine, being able to suspend the laws of his meaning. The divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates to those things which fall into the domain of possibilities so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can uh, suspend laws of physics allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can suspend the laws of physics and this falls under the realm of divine power so if someone says with the divine power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the body of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this falls into the realm of rationally possible it also moves us on to something else that is someone may say how do you know these miracles happened how do you know these this phenomena has happened the answer is we are not saying this from ourselves they at that juncture we give these judgments based upon scripture so on the Quran and Hadith, so the, we resort to the Quran and Hadith, meaning how do we know the Buraq exists? Because the, the Hadith has told us so. How do we know uh, the bodies of the Prophets are preserved? Because the Hadith has told us so. And it's alluded in the Quran from, with regard to the martyr. When the martyr dies, he's alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's alluded to. But uh, explicit wording is in the Hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Being unable to understand this distinction, Abu Layth then interprets every miracle found in the Quran, every miracle found in the Hadith, or rejecting the, the Hadith itself, meaning rejecting the transmission of the Hadith. Rejecting the transmission of the Hadith relates to sourcing of Hadith, relates to a, a methodology of how do we declare a Hadith as being forged, how do we declare a hadith being weak? How do we declare a hadith being acceptable? How do we declare a hadith being sahih, authentic, which is known as usul al-hadith? Now, if he doesn't ascribe to the traditional method of usul al-hadith, the Sunni method of authenticating and weakening, then he must make clear, clear what is his methodology. This is the foundational problem, meaning his methodology is totally unclear. So, uh, Ralph uh, Lauren, if that's your real name, La Ralph Lauren, Salam Sheikh, I pray you are well. Question regarding the descent of Sayyidina Isa Ali Salam, I may be wrong in some aspects of the question, Sheikh. How would we respond if someone says that a person enters, uh, a person enters Jannah, then they will uh, not leave Jannah like Prophet Idris Ali Salam entered heaven and chose not to come back. So if Sayyidina Isa a.s. is in the heavens right now and descends from the heavens near the day of judgment, will this not mean Allah has gone against his promise that once someone enters Jannah, they will never leave? See, uh, questions like this, a simple point will make you understand. The heavens, as samawat are different to Jannah paradise. Paradise is a creation on the right hand side of Sidratul Muntaha, the furthest low tree, which is above the seventh heaven. The seven heavens are as-samawatu saba, the seven concentric layers of the heavens where Sayyidina Isa a.s. ascended. He did not enter paradise. Paradise, Jannah, is a totally different entity. See, a simple distinction like this now. That if someone doesn't know that distinction, they would fall into the mistakes of Abu Layth 
thinking that there is a contradiction in the Quran and Hadith, when in reality there is no contradiction. So, but it, so, uh, a brother, Imaduddin asks, but isn't it also rationally impossible to say that the angel of death can be at the same place at the same time? Again, uh, saying that uh, the angel of death can be at the same place at the same time. How is that irrational to say someone, uh, the angel of death is at the same place at the same time? I think you mean to say the angel of death is in multiple places at the same time. This is what you uh, mean to say. Well, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates within the angel of death the ability to uh, to take the souls of multiple people at the same time, do you not believe this is rationally possible and the divine power can create this? This is the question. Meaning the answer is of course. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for uh, someone uh, to be in multiple places at the same time, uh, because the angel of death is not made from a physical body like us. The angel of death is made from light. So, uh, Sher Khan writes, Naeem Ajman is also live on Facebook. You can invite him from your page for a live discussion now as he, as he is live. I think we'll uh, attempt to do that if you can uh, tag him in and invite him. So, the inability to differentiate between rational judgments and empirical judgments are the main thing. We, we, we are attempting now to tag him in. Once he is tagged in, we, we may have a live discussion if he is uh, willing to do so. Because using Facebook now, there is no shouting, there's no slanging. The individual studied eight to ten years in Pakistan and is accustomed to those uh, scholars in Pakistan shouting across to one another. This and not answering questions, evading questions, attempting to set traps for the opponent that the person may slip. My questions are very simple. Uh, what methodology do you follow in in uh, in analyzing a text of the Quran and Sunnah? And additional to that, uh, what linguistical rules do you follow in uh, interpreting a uh, hadith or the verse of the Quran? Likewise, when you declare a Hadith as being a forgery, what methodology are you employing in declaring that hadith as a forgery? This is not delineated, demarcated by Abu Layth. And the other problem is uh, a lack of understanding the rational sciences, the, uh, the, the inability to understand a distinction between, or not even acknowledging a distinction between empirically observable phenomena and that which is a rational judgment. Two different distinct things. Being unable to do that leads to all these flaws that he he carries out. Uh, of course, the wrong verdicts he has been giving are also based on the first premise, which is that he has no uh, um, grounding in principles of uh, usul al-fiqh. So we've attempted to tag him in. If you give the... Uh, Did you tag him? He's been tagged, but he's not, he's not um, an invite to the session. So he has been invited. He's been tagged in. So uh, to join. We have in, uh, tagged, tagged in, in Abu Layf. So he's been tagged in to join this discussion. So after this, uh, I mentioned uh, something uh, a last point which was regarding insult which some of his followers took personally but the response to that is al-imam sa'aduddin al-taftazani in sharh al mentions a group of greek philosophers that do not even acknowledge the existence of material beings with the material world and he says there is no cure to them likewise uh, if a person does not furnish any clear methodology there is no cure Meaning, if they decide to use insulting remarks regarding great scholars, like he has done regarding some of the scholars, uh, and uh, insulting remarks regarding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what cure is there for such a, an individual?
Okay, now I'm going to go through the questions. If there are any questions, because we, uh, because I logged out of the uh, iPad and logged back in, some of the questions may be lost from the top. So repost your questions. I'm going to take purely questions now uh, with regard to this uh, entire issue. Uh, first question, uh, there is a question here. Brother, do you think your approach resonates with the Muslim youth of this country? Uh, well, you need to ask the Muslim youth of this country, even though um, I think the question is irrelevant to the actual discussion, meaning the discussion of the uh, with regard to uh, Abu Layth, uh, his uh, flawed methodology. Uh, a question here, should the Muftis make takfir of such an individual for the Kufar belief, such as denying the second coming of Isa Ali Salah? That's entirely up to the Muftis. Uh, the main problem I have is a lack of a rigorous method. Meaning, what this leads to is a haphazard cowboy method, uh, a cavalier method in interpreting the Quran and Hadith. Even though a person may tout themselves with the titles. Ansar Hussein asks, so what's the way forward? One of the main ways uh, forward uh, is that uh, a mass teaching of the works of Al-Imam Sunusi rahimullah, in rationalizing and understanding our religion. Meaning, inoculating our youth in understanding that what this diatribe this individual comes out with is not rational, is not based in any critical method in fact it's opinion the reality is that his opinions can be given even by the people posting on facebook you do if you follow the method of abu Layth, you do not need those qualifications that he claims anyone can make those opinions because they are not based and grounded in any principles so people here everyone can say i do not feel that swine and pig should be haram because it was in a t you, let me give you the example of his reasoning uh, he hasn't said this but someone can come out with this argument that pig was made haram only because in those days they never had freezers and pig meat is prone to rotting very quickly in hot environments now we do not live in hot environments and even if we do we have freezers therefore pig meat should be halal this is the type of reasoning Abu Layth would use or for instance alcohol was only made haram because it would intoxicate people but now we have uh, types of alcohol that do not intoxicate even in large amounts or uh, in small amounts therefore people should be permitted to drink alcohol this is the type of reasoning this type of reasoning is not logical meaning the ignoramus who, who has studied no rhetoric or no logic will think this is logical but in reality it's not logical and not principled at all this type of reasoning is the type of reasoning that he has been employing this reasoning is uh, no reasoning at all meaning anyone can apply uh, make a different opinion with regard to many things like Harun Yahya in Turkey Harun Yahya Adnan Akhtar was arrested uh, f uh, many months ago he made the reasoning that hijab was uh, made fard on the women only because there were people who would uh, who would uh, rape women or uh, do terrible things to women if they did not have the hijab so the Prophet ordered women to wear hijab but then to justify why he had uh, naked women in the studio he's, he said that the hijab is no longer fart this was his reasoning also but it was not grounded in any uh, method of jurisprudence Uh, 
And Muhammad Kamran Rashid, Mamati don't believe in the Aqeed of Hayat al Nabi according to you, Sheikh. What you said in the start that many sects have the same belief regarding the issue. The majority sect of mainstream sect with the the Ubandi uh, Wahhabis they believe in Aqeed of Hayat al Nabi, of course. Um, firstly, they the Mamatis do not believe in the disintegration of the body of the Prophet, even though this position is ascribed to Ismail al-Dahlwi as he stated in some of the manuscripts of Taqwiyatul Iman and he was taken to task by Fadlul Haq Khairabadi rahimahullah ta'ala but um, one thing to note is that Abu Layth is basing his opinions on uh, Khidr Hayat Bakrawi that is his source who is a student of Yunus Nu'amani who was from the Mamati Diobandis so people said I'm taking uh, pot shots at the Diobandi school or sectarian jibes at the Diobandi school this is not the case uh, the uh, association is there when Yunus Nu'amani would come to Birmingham one of the people to associate from what I am told with him was Abu Layth Okay, Muhammad Ali, you ask, according to the Asharis, Allah is free of place, direction, space. So how can Allah be seen in Jannah? Will it be with our eyes or just in the heart? Muhammad Ali, the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transcends the eyes. It is with the entire body. Because with these eyes, we only see colors and shapes and things which are limited in their forms. The vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only occur with the eyes, it will occur with the entire body. Likewise, the hearing of the divine speech occurs with the entire body. And the vision can occur not only in paradise, it can occur wherever Allah wills. Meaning, uh, the vision of Allah does not entail Allah is uh, located in a place. It entails that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the veils the, of the material world, wherever a person may be. So the vision, rationally speaking, the vision can occur anywhere. But out of nobility for the people of paradise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the division occur in paradise Truth seeker uh, writes, Salam, not sure if you have answered this already. You mentioned a few scholars did have the same views as Abu Layth and they were refuted. Can you mention who they were and who refuted them? Uh, well, if you check the works of heresiology, the different works of heresy, you will find that some of those views are found in those works like uh, the denial of the descent of Isa alayhi salam. So, uh, different sects from within the Mu'tazila because the Mu'tazila divided into subsects. When they divided into subsects, some of them held some of those positions which he articulates today. Uh, Aman Mansur. Uh, right. Comment. Yeah. So Aman Mansur writes a critique of the Brailwis. Some Sufis say that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam attends multiple hadras 
in different places at the same time. Isn't this tanaqud? How can we believe this? Now, they firstly, the, body, the blessed body of the Prophet ﷺ is located in his blessed grave and, and, and will remain there until the day of judgment. So the Prophet ﷺ, his blessed body does not go out to various locations. The actions of his nation are presented to him in his grave as is proven in a hadith narrated by Imam al-Bazzar in his Muslim and an authentic hadith. Scholars have authenticated the hadith that the actions are presented to him. The presenting of those actions and the observation of those actions is done with the ruh, the spirit. So when they say the Prophet ﷺ may observe various things at the same time, that observation is with the spirit, with the spirit. So this is not actually tanaqud. I hope you can uh, uh, counter if you if you believe I'm incorrect in that. You can bring up uh, something to counter that point so I may respond. Uh, Zainul Islam, we know as Muslims that Allah Almighty is creator of all things in existence. I've come across the story of Adam alayhi salam. When Hawa alayhi salam was created, the angels took a part of Adam alayhi salam uh, ribs and created Hawa. Does Allah Almighty give angels duties to also create beings into existence? They do not create, they, they carry out tasks. Like a man and woman procreate, meaning when a man and woman marry and they have a child, it doesn't mean they create, Allah creates. Likewise, the angels can carry out certain tasks. By the angels carrying out those tasks, it does not mean that the angels are the ones who are creating. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Ali, uh, Ali, can you base Aqeedah in singular narrations? The answer is yes, Aqeedah, but again, that Aqeedah would not, uh, in the rejection of which would not entail disbelief. So someone can hold a belief regarding low narrator reports, but rejection of that would not entail disbelief. It can entail heresy if there is a jama'ah. If there is a jama'ah with a low narrator reports, it, it can entail heresy. Uh, uh, Walid Hasnain Haydari Sheikh Saab, you know me very well and I would like to ask you why are you inviting Mufti Abu Layf now even though you have sat with him in the past face to face however it did not go well uh, initially I was not inviting him but I thought that maybe we, uh, someone suggested we can invite him on Facebook to discuss or if there is a chair the reason uh, Walid is that uh, his recent remarks regarding uh, the Blessed Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is essential that the methodology of Abu Layf be critiqued not personal attacks on the individual meaning his methodology needs to be critiqued uh, like uh, by people like yourself also meaning uh, spend your efforts in critiquing the method in order that people do not adopt an incorrect belief So, Muhammad Ali, uh, how uh, again another question, how can Allah? Uh, be seen by physical, by our aqidah, by uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But uh, he, Allah, is free from time and space. How can he be seen if he is free from time and space? Uh, that is because you are uh, under the opinion that Allah subhanahu wa taala, His vision is lo is within a location. Because when we observe things around us, we observe them in a location contained by time and place. But the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as he was. He removes the veils from us that we observe him. There's a distinction. Meaning, when we observe material things, we observe them in time and place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as he was prior to the creation. But he removes the veils of creation from our eyes and from our bodies that we may be able to observe him.
What advice would you give to our Sunni brothers who follow Abu Layth and still won't leave his side? Well, if you decide to follow him, at least be able to answer my contentions in a, in a rational math method without resorting to ad hominem attacks, without resorting to a mockery. Answer the points. If you cannot answer the points, then uh, we they like Raha Fiddin, there's no forcefulness on our part in terms of forcing people not to listen to him. They can listen, but what we will understand that these people are irrational fools, meaning foolish people. Uh, Tanzil Afsal Al Maturidi, Sheikh Saib, what is your opinion on Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Fatima radiallahu anha and her being angry with him? Tanzil, again, this question is not on the subject. So please, everyone remain on the subject. Of course, uh, the uh, answer to your question can be given on Friday. On Friday at uh, 9 pm, there will be a live questions and answers on. Uh, similar types of subjects Shabir uh, asks the question why haven't the scholars openly called him out and put him straight as he's misleading uneducated people this needs to be forwarded to the scholars someone wrote Sheikh Abu Layth wears a silver necklace I've heard he's Maliki is permissible in Malik Fik to wear silver necklaces. Again, I am not here to discuss his dressing dress code. His dress code is not an issue for me. Uh, Mu'min Ali, where did Abu Layth get his flawed methodology from? Did he make it himself by doing his own research or did he get this from someone else in the past who had similar methodology as him? From some Pakistani ulama. Those Pakistani ulama are the likes of Khidr Hayat Bakrawi, a uh, student of Yunus Nu'mani. The, and another one, the author of a book uh, uh, critiquing Sahil Bukhari. Uh, Dr. Ghamadi is another, these type of people. There's nothing original in these statements. Uh, aside from the comical side, there's nothing original. Tawseef Haydri, he also wears earrings. Again, brother, his dress code is not the issue here. Waqas uh, asked, when must one issue takfir? Remember, takfir is an issue that is contentious. And even in the Maliki school, takfir is only done through, uh, in the Hanbali school, Hanbali school. Takfir is done through qada, meaning uh, it's taken to a court. So, uh, and there are precautions for takfir also. So this is for something for the very learned scholars uh, to do. Yusuf Muhammad, I'm concerned, Sheikh, due to debating in general, isn't really going to change. Abu Layth, in all honesty, he will continue to spread his in interpretation. That is fine. Then our task is only to give the counter-interpretation, the counter-response to his misinterpretation. Imi Khan, can you elaborate on Alama Iqbal concept of Khudi? Uh, Imi Khan, uh, now's not the time to discuss Alama Iqbal, even though I would say in this case, Jawabi Shikwa is more needed, meaning the Jawabi Shikwa of uh, Iqbal, which is an excellent uh, poem. Uh, Khan Khani, Astaghfirullah, you nearly cracked a smile. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Khan Khani, I tend to sw smile a lot. Uh, it seems that some people are obsessed with my smiling. So whether I smile or not, again, is irrelevant to the discussion. If you meet me in person, you will realize I'm a human being like yourself and I also smile. If I do not smile, if Allah has created me with a serious demeanor, this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created my face. But again, such petty uh, comments are sometimes the haunts of empty minds. What is our role as youngsters in West when we see the bloodshed in places like Syria and Kashmir? Firstly, we need an intellectual awakening. That intellectual awakening is knowing our religion as a totality has even a system of governance. 
increasing our knowledge with regard to that system of governance. Yusuf Muhammad, I understand the purpose in supplying information to the public, but I've yet to see a debate who's a debater who changed the perspective. Follow, still follow them. Uh, Yusuf Muhammad, uh, there are people who have who have debated or have heard debates, who are following the debater who have changed their perspectives. I know of people personally who have changed. Uh, you may not see this because you are not involved. But I know of people who have changed many views after those debates. Tanzil Afsal Maturidi again you ask was Fatima alayhi salam angry with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu again I said tune in on Friday this subject will be discussed you can ask your question on, on that it's irrelevant to the subject um, Ralph Lauren Sheikh what uh, should our Aqidah be about the following the Quran states that someone was made to resemble uh, Prophet Isa uh, Actually, the Quran says should be and it's a matter of uh, interpretation. Should be Some scholars have said that it seemed that he was crucified, but others have said that they, the word is from shubha, which means doubt, that they have been placed in a doubt. So that would be the uh, best response to your entire paragraph. Okay, uh, Muhammad Ali, you ask a question. Uh, why isn't tafweed and ta'wil done for the verses regarding seeing Allah like we do with uh, istiwa? Why is there a distinction between these two? Who said there is a ta'wil for istiwa? Istiwa, we do tafsirul Quran bil Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar Rahman wa ala al arsh istawa. That Ar Rahman, the attribute is mentioned. Ar-Rahman made istiwa upon the throne. This, what does the word istiwa mean? We look in the Quran again. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَسَوَّاهُنَّ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتِ Then he, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ He made istiwa to the heavens and fashioned the heavens, سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتِ into seven heavens, meaning the, not paradise, the seven concentric layers. This word istiwa is referring to the divine action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of making the seven heavens. Likewise, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa entails the same meaning that Ar-Rahman made istiwa, meaning a divine action on the throne. Not sitting, not jalous. The word is referring to a divine action. But note the verse of the Quran doesn't say Allahu istawa. Uh, it says Ar-Rahmanu. The, the merciful. Why? Because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses the throne and everything underneath the throne. Why is the throne specified? Because the throne is the largest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So istawa is referring to a divine action. So we we do not make that wheel. We take we do tafsir of istiwa with tafsir al Quran bil Quran. Umar Walid, divin positions, can a layman make takfir of him due to how blatantly his kufr positions he holds? Uh, again, the layman needs to understand why his positions are faulty. Meaning, it's easy just declaring someone a kafir, but not understanding why his positions are faulty is the main problem. Because then a person can fall into 
adopting his uh, false preaching. Muhammad Ali, you ask, I have heard that Abu Bakr al-Jassas denied the vision of Allah. Is this true? I have uh, the Ahkam al-Quran of Abu Bakr al-Jassas here. I need to check uh, if he does deny this uh, position is incorrect and it goes against the consensus of the Sunni Muslims. Uh, Mu'min Ali, how come there are a lot of people following Abu Layth in this day and age? Do you think this may escalate and become a big problem in the future? Again, we live in the end of times. Akhir zaman. The Ashrat al-Sa'a is وَيَسُودُ كُلَّ قَبِيلَةٍ مُنَافِقُوهَا Every tribe will be led by its hypocrites. So whether it's in following increases, the problem I have is you are unable, meaning they are unable to substantiate any belief with a rational basis. Textual and rational basis, meaning our religion is based on two things, textual from Quran and Sunnah and then Ijma and, th and a rational basis, meaning the, the Quran and Sunnah does not contradict the rational judgments, the rational way of thinking. As Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin, Rahimallah Ta'ala, one of the Mujaddideen, he states that the, uh, the Aql and the text are like a rider and a horse. The rider and the horse. The texts are like the rider. They guide the horse. But the rider cannot uh, reach his destination and his location without the horse. So uh, Abu Layth and his followers, they are unable to furnish rational proofs. Meaning even his counters to my arguments are not based and grounded in any stronger proof. Uh, Muhammad Wattel, how are you feeling about the debate against Christians on Wednesday? Inshallah, I attend and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make my intention pure that they may accept Islam. The idea of debating is not to shout your opponent down. Some people, they watch my debates and they say, oh, he lost because he wasn't harsh enough or he didn't raise his voice or he didn't swear at his opponent. These are not the purpose uh, of debate. The purpose of debate is to present the arguments in a cogent a lucid manner and convince uh, the person if he is not convinced at least attempt to do your best in presenting the arguments as best as possible Luqman uh, what are the necessary beliefs in Islam beyond the five pillars and six articles of faith uh, brother uh, Read a simple work like the Tahawi Creed. You can pick up this work in one pound, an English translation of the Tahawi Creed, and read, and it has all the essential articles of faith. The Tahawi Creed is an amalgamation of the Ashari, Maturidi, and Athari creeds all in one text. Abdullah Haqqani, you ask a question regarding the Sadat. Uh, again, Abdullah Haqqani, this question should be re-asked on uh, Friday, inshallah. Waqas, you ask a question, do we hate the actions of the one performing the action? Can we differentiate, example, Murtad? The answer is we dislike disbelief. Our hatred is towards disbelief and irrationality. Uh, our hatred is towards disregard of the rational way of thinking, a cogent, clear, crystal clear way of thinking and understanding the Quran and Hadith. Tanzil uh, Afzal, you asked, was Fatima alayhi salam angry with Abu Bakr Siddiq for the third time? I'll answer, the answer is no. 
but uh, the detail of that you can uh, ask on Friday. Uh, Danish Khan, you ask, is Abu Layf a Muslim? Uh, he does not uh, seem as a Muslim to me. I believe he's a closet atheist or agnostic. I'll be very frank and candid as possible. I believe he is an agnostic posing off as a Muslim. He, he is on record as saying that a person is permitted to have some doubt regarding the very existence of Allah. Muhammad Umar, can you please explain in simple terms the correct interpretation of the hadith Abu Layth mentioned about the earth not consuming the bodies of the prophets? The correct interpretation is the bodies of the prophets are preserved. Meaning that is the clear cut understanding of the hadith. That the bodies are preserved. Then there is additional things like they are alive in their graves, which is an additional discussion, which Al-Imam al-Bayhaqi, rahimullah, he has an entire work on Hayatul Anbiya. He compiles many of the narrations proving that the Prophets are alive in their graves. This does not negate that they tasted death. Every soul tastes death, but after their bodies are placed in the graves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns their soul and gives them an ithmas life, a special life in the grave. Tanzil of Sal al Maturidi, sorry for the spam, Sheikh Sam. Apology accepted. Abdullah Haqqani, Sheikh, may Allah bless you. Can you please enlighten us regarding to bay'ah? Is this fard to do? The answer is no, Abdullah Haqqani. It is not fard uh, to do bay'ah. Uh, in fact, you should. Um, below the current video, there is a post on a book, the Sufi Lighthouse. Order this book. Purchase this book and read that book. Uh, is Imam Malik's golden chain of hadith the most strongest and reliable? Yes, the golden chain is one of the most reliable chains. Tanzil Afsal al Maturidi. Okay, Sheikh Saab, I have one question. I'm currently doing a Qida course on Maturidis with Sheikh Atabeg. Should I carry on or not? As I think he holds some weird views. However, on Maturidi Qida, I think he is neutral, but I want your advice. Uh, Atabeg Shukraf, in my opinion, is a person of innovation. Bid'ah, you should stay away from him and find another Sunni scholar and study with that Sunni scholar. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ghafoor, is there any, only one thought of rational methodology which is correct? You both come from a Sunni background, so why such a difference? Abu Layth has bolted away from any Sunni background, meaning he's, he's an independent thinker, who likes to think of himself as an independent thinker, but he really roots himself in the neo Mu'tazili thought of Khidr Hayat uh, Bakrawi. And this is his uh, thoughts are rooted in his methodology. So he is not rooted in the Sunni methodology. Muhammad Ali, why did the Prophet وسلم, compare seeing Allah to seeing the moon? Isn't this against the verse? No one resembles him. Uh, firstly, uh, this is one of those things again which comes down to fahm, understanding. The Prophet وسلم, was asked by the companions, how will we see Allah in the hereafter? The Prophet وسلم, said, do you not see the full moon? They said yes. Is he comparing the moon to Allah or is he comparing the vision of the believer to the moon? That vision of the believer is being compared to his vision in the hereafter. I mean, the moon is not being compared to Allah. The vision of the believer is being compared to the vision of the believer in the hereafter. So a simple understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Sheikh Salih al uthaymin unable to understand this, he said uh, that the way the moon is located in the heavens, Allah is located in the heavens. Meaning, or some words to that effect, I don't want to misquote him, but they believe that the likeness is being done to the moon. Again, like this, 
the, the rational faculty in the, the correct Sunni methodology, there is no contradiction between the rational mind and the Quran and the Sunnah. But those who have a faulty methodology, when they find an apparent contradiction and they are unable to reconcile the two, they resort to the, the methodology of this Abu Layth. Danish Khan is Abu Leis a qualified the answer is no I believe he's a, he is vacuous empty headed uh, has no real grounding in knowledge if he does he needs to really demonstrate this Asrar Rashid uh, Salafis say that Imam Abu Hanifa is a murja and that he's a good murja what do you say on this <coughs> well if he is a good murja then there's no problem meaning there's a category of murja which were considered Sunnis so there is no problem if they say he is a good murja, which is an, a type of irja which is considered within the boundaries of Sunni Islam. Did any Maliki scholars ever warn regarding Naim Ajmal not to take him serious and disown him? Uh, yes, they did in Morocco. There is an article on this on five pillars. You can refer back to that article. How long did Iblis worship Allah for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I have no recourse to any. Uh, but again, uh, currently we are not discussing the main Iblis. We are discussing the minor Iblis. So please keep the questions relevant. Uh, a question with Sunnis following uh, uh, Abu Layth, do you think learning rational theology is pertinent for youngsters? If so, should this subject uh, um, be brought forward to in under undergraduate studies? What are prerequisites for learning rational theology? You can start with a basic text without prerequisites. Like uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad bin Zaini Dahla has a text which is in English called the Essential Islamic Creed. That text I taught up and down Britain <coughs> in the year 2016. People up and down UK learned that text. There is also a recording online of one of the lessons. Uh, the, this text should be taught by everyone who is qualified to do so up and down UK, teaching young people how to rationalize their belief, but at the same time not rejecting the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma. The consensus of the Ummah. Uh, what is the meaning of seven heavens? Does it mean seven galaxies or seven skies and seven lands? Please can explain in an easy way. Uh, the easy way is seven concentric circles that are out of the boundaries of the observable universe. If you travel for millions of light years into the galaxies and universes, you will reach seven concentric uh, circles in the metaphysical realm. Metaphysical realm meaning beyond the material realm. Muhammad Ali, uh, I have heard that Abu Bakr al jassas in Al-Ahkam al quran said that there was a group of Salaf who said seeing Allah means seeing the mercy of Allah and his reward as opposed to seeing him. <coughs> I'm a, I am unaware of this quote uh, after this live. I may check this quote. Uh, but this uh, quote needs to be verified. There's a Question: Am I able to deny the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam having black magic on him? As from what I understood, Abu Mansur al-Maturidi denied it. Please present uh, the the rejection of that. But the general opinion is that the magic did not affect the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the way we uh, people are affected. Common people are affected by the magic. It affected in a very limited sense, and this was only done. Uh, for tashri, meaning for law giving purposes, but of course, this is a detailed discussion. This is a, the common opinion, 
Then others like uh, the scholar of Hadith in Karachi, uh, late scholar Ghulam Rasul Saidi, rahimullah, he, uh, he denied this uh, also. He denied the narration and critiqued the narration. There are others who critique the narration. Uh, so this uh, thing, uh, this actual uh, narration needs uh, a deeper analysis. Luqman Fiyaz, did Imam Abu Hanifa none reject some hadiths that are compiled in Sahih al-Bukhari? The answer is, <coughs> if he did, it would be based upon the chains of narration that had reached him, which were different to the chains of narration of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. So, I will... Uh, go through some of these questions which are relevant now to the subject and if there are no uh, relevant questions to the subject then we will be uh, switching off inshallah for the night Ahmad Rida you state the differences between name Ajmal live stream and Sheikh Asrad uh, Rashid is Sheikh Asrar has asked Naim and Ajmal and his followers to ask questions and won't get blocked. And Naim Ajmal is blocking right, left and center, not even bothered to answer. That is correct. We are not blocking anyone. They are free to come and ask questions. Uh, again, just for the listeners, I'm only answering those questions which are now relevant to the subject. Hassan Abbasi, Salam Sheikh Sra, regarding Aqeedah, what English books would you recommend for us to read on our own? And after going through Imam Bajuri's epistle and your lectures on that book, what would you recommend should be the next step for Aqeedah? Firstly, Sunni publications, uh, Sunni publications based in Netherlands have many good book, books published. They have books like uh, a commentary on Jawharat al-Tawheed was published uh, by one of the publishers associated with Sunni publications. There are numerous titles in Sunni publications that you can look at and uh, read those works. Likewise, the works of Imam Ghazali, uh, his work Al-Iqtisad fil Atiqad is translated into English. Likewise, uh, the work of Imam Al-Juwaini, rahimallahu ta'ala, uh, and numerous other works which are available in English. But start with the works of Sunni publications. They have many good works out there. Tanzil of Sal al Maturidi, you ask regarding uh, hadith works. Um, the Muqaddimah ibn Salah rahimullah, is translated into English. You also have a Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin's commentary on the Baykuniya, which is in English. These are two very good books to start with. You can also read uh, Muhammad Mustafa Azmi's work, uh, a critique uh, on Shat's origins of Muhammadan jurisprudence. So the Orientalist uh, attacks on the hadith literature, the response to that. <coughs> Remember brothers, I am only answering those questions which are relevant. Umar al-Hajjar, Sheikh, how, do you, uh, how to bring young uh, generation back to correct scholars and away from philosophical YouTube Sheikh? The problem is they, they are not even rooted in philosophy, meaning uh, the individual is unaware of different philosophical schools. If you question him on utilitarianism or uh, any uh, philosophy that comes in your mind, he will be totally unaware of what that philosophy is. I mean, it's traditional Ashari scholars were able to define a philosophy and then dismantle that philosophy also in with the rules of the correct epistemology which they espoused. Uh, 
Abu Layth claims to have ijazat isna through ulama such as Sheikh Muhammad Abu Khubza. Well, uh, I'm sure that uh, Sheikh Abu Khubza, who's passed away, who, uh, must have been unaware of many of the things that he was uh, promulgating and pr pr propagating in the UK. Again, please only pose questions which are relevant to the subject. Uh, Khan Sajid asked Asrar, are you Salafi? If you mean an inscription to the Salaf, then I am Salafi. I follow the method of a Salafu Salihun, meaning the true Salaf. But if you mean the uh, pseudo modern Salafi movement, then I am not ascribed to the Madkhali and the new these new movements. If you mean this a Salafu Salihun, uh, do I read works like Sira Alami Nubala and read on the biographies of the Salaf and follow that way? Yes. But if you mean those who came after, uh, do we do I follow their methodology? The answer is no. Muhammad uh, <coughs> Shiraz asks, Sheikh, did I hear it correct that you said that Abu Lais has connection with modernist Javed Ghamadi? From Pakistan, <coughs> is that modernist a teacher? Probably, I didn't say he's his teacher. I said his views are similar to the views of uh, Ramadi. He's very clearly copying and pasting some of his arguments. Uh, likewise, uh, Khizar, uh, the person I mentioned, Khizar Hayat Bakrawi, is taking from him. Uh, Sam Saat, you ask what classes are you currently teaching we can join? Inshallah, those classes are being held in the JIC Woodlands, Woodlands Road Masjid in Sparkin. You can attend from half six till eight on Monday to Thursday, as well as on a Sunday, we have the Al Jami Al Imam Tirmidhi from <coughs> six to eight, four to six. There's uh, books, uh, uh, Isa Goji, uh, the Mughni al Tulad, commentary on Isa Goji, and Lashbaw and Nadair in uh, Hanafi uh, uh, Maxim legal maxims. On Fridays in, in the same masjid in Sparkin, there is a Darsul Quran for half seven. In Tafsirul Quran, we are going through Surah to Al Imran. On Wednesdays, there's Tafsirul Quran half six till eight, where we are currently doing Tafsir of Surah to Al Kahf from Jalalain. On Tuesdays, Mishkatul Masabih from half six till eight. Inshallah ta'ala attend and benefit from these lessons. There are numerous other lessons also. Khan Sajid, Brother Asrar, what training program would you advise Abu Layth to take to make his chest more in shape, please? Maybe uh, 300 press-ups on a daily basis. Ayub Khan, Sheikh, do you reckon to study only Ashari Kalams or can I also study philosophy in university for the purpose of knowing the opposition arguments? Ayub Khan, firstly, you should ground yourself in Ashari Kalam and Quran and Sunnah. Then study the philosophy. But before you read the philosophy, you need to read the critique of giant uh, scholars like the likes of a Sheikh, Sheikh Al Islam Mustafa Sabri, Rahimullah, and the others. Many numerous other scholars wrote critiques of modern philosophy. Uh, Aman Mansour, what do you think about Sheikh Saeed Fuda from Jordan, a Sunni scholar with superb editions, uh, uh, critical editions of Sunni works? An amazing uh, scholar 
who has done good work for Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Tanzil Afsal al Maturidi did Al Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi deny Al Isra wal Mi'raj? I doubt it very much because the Sunni ulama they have agreement on the Al Isra wal Mi'raj. <coughs> Okay, the last few questions now. May I ask what we have in store for the Wednesday debate with Christians? Will you be uh, relying on the books of Kalam or Western academics? Well, I think we need to wait for uh, the debate. Uh, of course, the main book I will be relying on to debate them is known as the Holy Bible, the, the, the scriptures that they believe in. Is Abu Layth a Qareen working for Dajjal? No, he's a human being. General advice to those who follow Abu Layth, uh, don't blind follow, critique what he says also, and learn basic logic, learn rational theology before uh, following such an individual. Here, uh, a question. Uh, Asra Rashid. Um. So, Asra Rashid Ibn Taymiyyah said anything that exists must have a formal image, otherwise, it doesn't exist. Does this show Ibn Taymiyyah compared Allah to the creation? Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, the work on Atadmuriya. Atadmuriya is where he lays out his principles of Tashbih. There is a critical edition of uh, the Tadmuriya, meaning a critique of the Tadmuriya, done by a Sheikh Said Fuda, which has been translated into English as the Palmyrian Creed. This is published by Sunni Publications. Refer to that and read that work, inshallah. Uh, Nabil Abid, Sheikh, what work on Mustafa Sabri and philosophy did you recommend? He has a work, famous work, called Mawqif uh, al-Aqli wal-Ilm. Uh, a book com comprising of over 2,000 pages. But there are also the works of a Sheikh Abdurrahman Hassan Habannaka and the works of a Sheikh Ramadan Al Bouti. Rahmallah. Uh, Ayub Khan, an important question. Um, Sheikh, have you seen Hassan Ridwan's third rebuttal to you? To you, will you be doing another response to him, inshallah? Ayub Khan, yes. Uh, I haven't managed to sit down and record the rebuttal, but uh, the answer is very simple. I watched the the video. Inshallah, do dua. Allah subhanahu wa taala gives me time where I can make a third rebuttal to that atheist. Uh, last few questions. Is there any particular group in the Ahl Sunnah who do takfir of Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi rahimallahu ta'ala? Of course, this question is not relevant to the subject, but there are scholars who did criticize the Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. I myself ascribe to those people who uh, believe a Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi rahimallahu is a great scholar of Islam and follow the opinion of an Imam Jalaluddin Abdul Rahman al Suyuti and an Imam Abdul Wahab al Sha'arani. Rahimahumullah ta'ala. Uh, Sheikh, when uh, debating Christians, which Bible do you use? Because there are a few. Uh, I have a few, but the RSV, Revised Standard Version, there is also um, uh, the Jerusalem Bible. There is also uh, the Douay Version. Uh, the one I have in front of me here is the, the Gideons, meaning the Holy Bible placed by the Gideons. A very nice uh, copy in terms of easily spaced out and re very readable, this Bible. Uh, of course, uh, before you even read the Bible, you should read the critique of the Bible. Read uh, 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 Izhar al-Haq is a standard work, but there is 
uh, there are better works a good book to start with is this work the bible and islamic perspective this is 11 volumes by an author known as J.R. Crook uh, and his Muslim name is Muhammad Noor. This is 11 volumes, uh, the best Islamic uh, author on the Bible that I have uh, read. There are other works also, simpler works like 200 ways the Quran corrects the Bible. Of course we are digressing from uh, Abu Layf. Can we get hold of your Darsin Nizami lectures online? Inshallah, uh, soon I will be live streaming many of the lectures. Inshallah, uh, we will be calling it a night. Uh, the opportunity was given to Abu Layf and his followers. Uh, mainly to his followers to come and critique anything I have said. Of course, this is a, a summary of the critical method of how Abu Layth needs to furnish principles, lay down the principles of what he follows, how he interprets the texts of the Quran and the Sunnah, and the linguistical rules, the, the rules of Arabic language, and present a rational method. And I believe he will be unable to do so as for his followers, if they still choose to blindly follow him and are unable to answer any of the points that I have made, then to them, lakum dinukum waliyadin. Meaning, you have your religion, and we have our own religion, which is the way of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.